displayed on a calculator, we add 180 degrees. 35 degrees, 180 degrees, 145 degrees. This is consistent with the components of because it gives a vector that is to the left and upward. Note it has the same magnitude and direction throughout the rabbit's run because the acceleration is constant. That means that we could draw the very same vector at any other point along the rabbit's path, just shift the vector to put its tail at some other point on the path without changing the length or orientation. This has been the second sample problem in which we needed to take the derivative of a vector that is written in unit vector notation. One common error is to neglect the unit vectors themselves, with the result of only a set of numbers and symbols. Keep in mind that a derivative of a vector is always another vector. Figure 4 to 7 the acceleration of the rabbit at T15S. The rabbit happens to have this same acceleration at all points on its path. Answer. A. Y. M. 40. 20. 0. Minus 20. Minus 40. Minus 50. 20. 40. A. These are the X and Y components of the vector at this instant. A. X. M. 60. 80. 145 degrees. X. A. Additional examples, video, and practice available at Wiley Plus. 70. Chapter 4 Motion in 2 and 3 Dimensions. 4 4 Projective Motion. Learning Objectives. After reading this module, you should be able to. 4.13 On a sketch of the path taken in projectile motion, explain the magnitudes and directions of the velocity and acceleration components during the flight. Key Ideas 4.14 Given the launch velocity in either magnitude angle or unit vector notation, calculate the particle's position, displacement, and velocity at a given instant during the flight. 4.15 Given data for an instant during the flight, calculate the launch velocity. Build circle in projectile motion, a particle is launched into the air with a speed version 0 and at an angle mu 0 is measured from a horizontal x-axis. During flight, its horizontal acceleration is 0 and its vertical acceleration is g downward on a vertical y-axis. The equations of motion for the particle while in flight can be written as xx0 p0 plus 0 t yy0 p0 sin 0 t1 t p t2 dy p2 y p0 sin 0 gt p0 sin 0 t t g y y0 
projectile might be a tennis ball big, sport aid or baseball in flight, but it is not a duck in flight. Many sports involve the study of the projectile motion of a ball. For example, the racquetball player who discovered the Z-shot in the 1970s easily won his game because of the ball's perplexing flight to the rear of the court. Our goal here is to analyze projectile motion using the tools for two-dimensional motion described in module 4 to 1 through 4 to 3 and making the assumption that air has no effect on the projectile. Figure 4 to 9, which we shall analyze soon, shows the path followed by a projectile when the air has no effect. The projectile is launched with an initial velocity. Versus 0, D0 0 Versus 0, that can be written as D0 Y daily. 4 to 19. Components version 0x and d0y can then be found if we know the angle u0 between in the positive x direction. d0x versus 0. d0 plus u0 in version 0y version 0 can u0. Opening parenthesis 4 20. Closing parenthesis colon. Richard Magna Fundamental Photograph Figure 4 to 8 A stroboscopic photograph is a yellow tennis ball bouncing off a hard surface. The twin is that the ball has projectile motion. Versus During its two-dimensional motion, the projectile's position vector and velocity vector are A Change continuously, so this acceleration vector is constant and always directed vertically downward. The projectile has no horizontal acceleration. Projectile motion, like that in Fig. 4 to 8 and 4 to 9, looks complicated, but we have the following simplifying feature known from experiments. In projectile motion, the horizontal motion and the vertical motion are independent of each other, that is, neither motion affects the other. Seven one four four projectile motion A X Y O zero theta B zero version zero Y version zero X Y O X O V X D Y D X Y Y O V Y equals zero V X Y O V X D Y D X Y O V X X O version zero X X O V X X O V X X O V X X O V X Y O version zero Y O V Y Y Y O V Y equals zero Y O V Y Y V X D Y theta V V X D Y vertical motion vertical velocity launch launch speed decreasing constant velocity speed increasing constant velocity constant velocity stop at maximum height constant velocity plus right arrow horizontal motion projectile motion launch velocity launch angle this vertical motion plus this horizontal motion produces this projectile motion. Figure 4 to 9 the projectile motion of an object launched into the air at the origin of a coordinate system and with launch velocity at angle U0. The motion is a combination of vertical motion, constant acceleration, and horizontal motion, constant velocity, as shown by the velocity component, versus 0. 72. Chapter 4 Motion in 2 and 3 Dimensions Richard Magna Fundamental Photograph Figure 4 to 10 One ball is released from rest at the same instant that another ball is shot horizontally to the right. Their vertical motion were identical. The ball and the can fall the same distance H. M. And. G. H. Figure 4 to 11 The projectile ball always hits the fallen can. Each 
cause a distant age from where it would be were there no free fall acceleration. This feature allows us to break up a problem involving two-dimensional motion into two separate and easier one-dimensional problems, one for the horizontal motion with zero acceleration and one for the vertical motion with constant downward acceleration. Here are two experiments that show that the horizontal motion and the vertical motion are independent. Two golf balls. Figure 4 to 10 is a stroboscopic photograph of two golf balls, one simply released and the other shot horizontally by a spring. The golf balls have the same vertical motion, both falling through the same vertical distance in the same interval of time. The fact that one ball is moving horizontally while it is falling has no effect on its vertical motion, that is, the horizontal and vertical motions are independent of each other. A great student browser. In Fig. 411, a blur gun team using a ball with a projector is aimed directly at a can suspended from a magnet and just as the ball leaves the blur gun, the can is released. If G the magnitude of the free fall acceleration were zero, the ball would follow the straight line path shown in Fig. 4 to 11 and the can would float in place after the magnet released it. The ball would certainly hit the can. However, G is not zero, so the ball still hits the can. If Fig. 4 to 11 shows, during the time of flight of the ball, both ball and can fall the same distance H from their zero G locations. The harder the demonstrator blows, the greater is the ball's initial speed, the shorter the flight time, and the smaller the value of H. Checkpoint 3. At a certain instant, a fly ball has velocity. Versus. Versus. 25i. 4.9j. The x-axis is horizontal, the y-axis is upward, and is in meters per second. As the ball past its highest point, the horizontal motion. Now we are ready to analyze projectile motion, horizontally and vertically. We start with the horizontal motion. Because there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction, the horizontal component Vx of the projectile's velocity remains unchanged from its initial value version 0x throughout the motion, as demonstrated in Fig. 4 to 12. At any time t, the projectile's horizontal displacement xx0 from an initial position x0 is given by e2.215 with a 0, which we write as xx0 v0xt. Because version 0x version 0 to 2 0, this becomes xx0 v0 to 2 0 t. The vertical motion, 4 to 21. The vertical motion is the motion we discussed in module 2 to 5 for a particle in free fall. Most important is that the acceleration is constant. Thus, the equations of table 2 to 1 apply, provided we substitute G for and switch to line location. Then, for example, E2.215 becomes 0 G path. Y Y0 V0 Y T1 2 G T2. E0 sin 0 T 1 2 G T2. 4 to 22. Where the initial vertical velocity component version 0y is replaced with the equivalent version 0 sin u0. Similarly, e2.211 and 2 to 16 become uy. e0 sin u0 gt.